So this is a Thursday, August 18th staff meeting. We've uh, had our little, uh, I've messed around with the guys. We've all messed around with each other a little bit, brought some good insults back and forth, built some male bonding, you know, you know, uh, is that, that's tea. That looked like scotch when you picked it up, Luke. Just tea. It's just tea. All right. Sure. So uh, Brenda just kick, kicked off the question, which is, so I'm like, what, what kind of, this acceleration that's going on right now is pretty visible to everybody, right? I mean, it's mainstream visible. So, um, I, but I can't, I don't really see, I just see the public exasperated and angry and that they want that something to change. But I don't see anything else going on out there. And Brandon has a sort of insight into where the, or the, uh, I guess what we'll call the online community is heading, uh, thought leadership, and the, because very, really very few people. Really think about it. There's very few people. There's very few people. Um, and those very few people have a, a undo, far more influence than we, than is obvious from the numbers. Yes. So, um, so how, I'm not sure what, how to ask the question. So acceleration is happening, right? Have we got to the So you have this window, right? The window effect, the Overton window. We're, the the population is is now is now aware of the problem and the severity of the problem. People are talking about the potential for civil war, and honestly, if certain individual called for it, it would happen. Or even any number of individuals could call for it, it would probably get close to happening. Then there's there's a um, and I don't mean like it would just break out house to I mean, it would just begin to snow, snowball. Um, but is there, a, there's a point at which the public says, this has got to change versus I don't like this, right? They're in the, I don't, I reckon, I'm aware of the problem. I recognize the problem. Um, I don't like this, but are we into, are we getting close to what's an answer? What, how do we solve this? In other words, they have to get tired of being frustrated and before they go to um, what can we do about it? Because what can we do about it is oh, that only happens when they finish thinking doubling down is going to work. Yeah, I think there's another step in there and, and you, you know, they got the, I don't like this. And then they have to go through the step of somebody has to fix this before they get to, I have to fix this. Yeah. That's you have to fix start. this. Yeah. That's oh. when they start going, okay, how do we, how do we make this work? They start trying to figure out, they start including themselves in the solution process. And I don't think, I think they're there yet. Yeah. What I'm trying to get to, across to people is you can, you can push the window over them. And China's at war with your country. Just the fentanyl that gets shipped here is enough to be at war with them. And that's not all they're doing, right? The next war is with Mexico. Our Southern border should be a bullets fly zone and it is not. We have a, a genocidal amount of people immigrating in. And yes. the top correspondents in the world are, are calling it a genocide because it is. I'm, I just tell people they're at war because they don't know. They don't know what a war looks like. There aren't bullet fl bullets flying in America. I mean, unless you're in the cities, then there are. So we can, I want to bring it to them using the influencers because they're going to try to bring it to them soft and they, it's on their shoulders. No one can fix this for you. You all got to fix it for yourselves. And you have to do it now because your window is the next two years. That's the window. That's why no one can predict anything because it's going to come down to what people choose to do over the next couple of years that determines what can happen in the future. You want to let okay. demographics decide? I wouldn't. Well, that looks dismal for everybody. Well, I mean, <clears throat> the demographics will eventually decide. Eventually. Well, the, the, what, right? The problem is that's a very high cost. Yes. Right? It, I mean, frankly, Russia's having that problem. Um, 
It's a cost we people, have to pay. I don't, people, yeah, I don't know that people understand what that means by the demographics will just decide. They, they think that that means that the, the world's going to look exactly as it does now. It's just going to be different people in there. What we're talking about is the underclass is going to explode and it's going to collapse everything that, we're, that we take. Yeah, we won't be able to have this. This demographic, demographic shift isn't a status quo shift. No, it's not a rotation. No. It's a replacement. Yeah. Well, you're you're gonna you're gonna watch the people in the hut countries start to starve and come north like it was an army. And it's gonna be because they're starving and in a pinch. And that turns everywhere they move into the hut countries. <laughs> they don't, you know, they don't maintain Western medical advances when they move into an area. Well, I mean, it, it, you can assimilate if you assimilate. Um, if your rate of assimilation is 1% at any given time, never exceeding 1%, and it takes at least three generations, you can do the math on how many people you can bring in, right? But then there's a difference between bringing in people who are adaptable, the upper and upper middle and middle classes, and people who are not adaptable, the lower middle, upper, upper middle and lower proletariat. And so we're bringing in people who are not adaptable when the whole point here is that the, the thing that makes America work is it maximizes adaptation at the cost of the people who can not adapt. Right. We, we get a, this. There tends to be a drag effect. Right. So the people at the bottom still live better off. But they don't have any they, they have a sense of constantly being left behind even though they're better off but you were not going to be able to pay for this stuff all right that, that, that they're doing it's never going to happen when when i bring this stuff up i like try to talk about the hydraulics of it because in america not only like do refugees and poor people come here and they should not because it burdens us like we take yes. the best people from everywhere else too yeah their best people lowering their standard of living where they are where we should be exporting technologies not moving people around Correct. Because we're we're adapted to the environments we're in and the people that we live around. Well, I, don't, I mean, selfishly, I don't care if we uh, because the way because the way things are distributed in a population, we shouldn't be too worried about brain draining, unless it's on a scale that's happening in that happened in Ireland, Lebanon, and is happening in Russia. Because you can't. I mean, if you this is going to sound horrible, but uh, you know, you lose that many people from the upper and middle classes from Ireland, you know, you, you don't recover and they haven't. Um, if you lose that many people, Christians from Lebanon, which is the Muslim world, and you take Syrians, and well, I'm going to stay away from the ethnicity, but if you take that many Christians out of that part of the world, you're going to lose your high trust population. If you take that many educated people out of Russia, right? When they're, all, when they're not reproducing enough anyway, you're gonna gut that country long-term. So what's appearing in the United States is our average IQ is dropping. It's not really dropping among our white folk because we're still at 101. If you look at the, but what's happening is the aggregate of the country is now at 97 and it's gonna hit 95. When it hits 95, you can't have a political, you can't have a democracy. You there don't are, have a democracy. Well, you don't really have a democracy. You don't, and you can't because the people aren't capable of it. There's no, there isn't, the distribution is insufficient for, for participatory government. So we don't want to bring people that are incapable of participating in participatory government here. Correct. Uh, there's an error and people they want to bring those people in and well, then they want to bring those people right in to participate because they can be told what to vote for not because they can choose what to vote for cnn and all the media companies yeah. they, they run programming that encourages people in the southern parts of the hemispheres to come here yeah. like it's better yeah all right they're just this is just war very very straightforward um, Brandon suggested exporting technologies. I don't agree with that as a blank statement. 
because you are yeah. empowering your competitors and enemies. Agree, agree. Now, and, and the Chinese were very good at that, by the way. Uh, they, they have the right, if you want to colonize, they do it right. Um, because they're exceptional at colonization. I mean, look what they've done. All those freaking people think they're Han. They're not, right? Um, uh, all those people think they're Chinese. They're not, they're East Asian. Some of them are Southeast Asian. But uh, so and the Chinese are really good at protecting their technology uh, to the point though, where they didn't apply it. In other words, they, uh, they, they were, had the problem we had with guilds, um, except that it was amplified because they had a centralized bureaucracy. Whereas if you guys ran a guild in this town, and I could, uh, I would be prohibited from competing with you. It didn't mean I couldn't go to another town in another Princeton and do it there. And so we had, uh, we had uh, local, local regulation of competition, but not, in, but not inter, inter regional uh, regulation of competition. And that was. So how was I getting it? So. Talking about framing it for regular people, right? Sorry? Is, is the window coming? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, oh, I mean, it can't not because the economic the economic incentives are going to go away. I mean, you're going to be constrained into seeing reality soon. People start. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm asking a, a slightly different question. Let me see if uh, I can. And I, I think you're better at answering this than I am. So oh, I know you're better at answering this than I am. Um, it's there's like I get I know something's going to happen. It's obvious. The question and the problem is, I seem to um, be an early mover, so I see what's going to happen, but I have very low sense of what the public, how the public is going to get there, because social proof is required for the public to get there, right? I mean, they need their neighbors and friends to get there. They need to all get there. So the question is, um, is there anything we can do or anybody can do? In other words, we're, there's a small group of us, right? I mean, it's a, the number of people who are thinking is kind of small. It scares me. <laughs> um, and uh, is there anything we can actually do? Or are we just tracking the an eventuality that we have no under control over? I mean, is there? I mean, if I, we, I like Lucas' idea of persecuting and prosecuting enemies, that's what we can do in the meantime, because yeah. that's what we're going to need to do in the through time. And there's nothing else to do, as far as I can tell. I mean, they abused children across the nation for two years in a row. Told them it was good for the parents and the children to do so. Just straightforward. I just I don't see it. People can. It's not like you, you don't have an opportunity to sit trial, but I want to start at the top because a lot of people are wrapped up in what is just straightforwardly a, a war against a nation internally, and the evidence is in right right in front of people in the abused children. You can just pick people out who are in those scenarios. Like, do you want to be? held accountable for what, what what went down? Or would you prefer to be considered one of those who was following orders? Because I think most people want to be considered the latter and then given the opportunity to re-educate themselves so that they can't be tricked into abusing their own people ever again. So are you making an argument that this court thing is, the, is how we play the game? Is that how you're saying it? <clears throat> I... Criticism? I mean, we do video criticism or... or uh... Or we essentially make a legal argument, or do we do pseudo courts? Uh, I don't know which which thing are you recommending. I'm not a. I'm not recommending things to us. How we prosecute? How do we do what you just brought about? I uh, I go to local committee meetings, political meetings, and tell people this this message, and they know the people who are doing these things, and they can pursue them however they want. I tell regular people that if you're not pursuing your local schools for your taxes, 
because they use them to abuse your kids. Like if you're not seeking restitution, like you're not doing the right thing. It's not yeah, the right thing to do. I know that's what you do and you're good at that. Yeah. The problem is we have to scale that. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know how to scale that. I mean, I, I know how to scale it if we take advantage of one of the existing party structures. I would piggyback on the Republican Party structure and force out everybody who would compromise with Democrats and leave everybody else and then use that hierarchy and the information structure to get information out to the populace. Yep. It's only a subset of Democrats. I say Democrats is a, a very broad brush. Probably most of them are just apathetic and not paying attention. They want their team to win. That's just, that's not politics. That's you going along with stupid shit that's going on around you. That's not participating. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Most people in America are politically apathetic. And they don't participate. They don't care. They don't know. And like the they're populist not, they're position. They're not morally apathetic. No, they're no, they're not correct, but they don't participate. Like that's that whole bunch will participate if what's going on is the children are being abused. And if they don't, they're just saying they're not a serious part of the community. I think it's I think just, uh, children ahead, have been abused since since the 60s. Yes, yeah. But of course. Putting white and black kids together into the same class is child abuse. I fr I frame my upbringing is being stolen from me. But at this point, like experimenting on them outwardly and putting masks on them straightforwardly when all the evidence said, don't do it. Like this is an open and shut thing. This is very, very closed. And the evidence was there beforehand. And yeah, now that it's been two years, the evidence is just, it's, it's unsurmountable. They live on social proof, right? That, that's the it's, problem is it doesn't, is that uh, tell them that the social proof they're looking for is them to start being hurt by the people around them because that's what happens next that's the social proof that comes next that's the swing to the right that everyone's worried about that's reactionary politics 101 the next limit is you will be harmed by those whose children you've harmed if you think that's not the next limit like you are delusional And then your conflicts that everyone's worried about, that's when they pop off because it's hands-on. Doubling down is running out of efficacy. But you were saying before we got started that this feels worse than the 70s and so on. I haven't met anybody in your generation that doesn't say that same thing, that this is worse. We're more unmoored. But I'm pretty sure that that is common sentiment as well. Okay, so, so that's. I'm going to run with what, with the strategy for what you just said. So this, so the, so, uh, the best way to build a durable organization is to start with an achievable goal, and expand. Right, just keep adding. That's the natural behavior of organizations anyway, right? If they can get something done, just, but that takes a long fucking time. And it, right, and I, and I, I, you know, I, that takes time. I, I'm just looking at this and like, I, I went from thinking it had to, it was gonna happen in 2019 to 2020 to thinking, okay, well, this, I was wrong about how long it takes the public to adapt. It's now it's gonna take 2025 to 2030. And all of a sudden, these freaking we get COVID, we get the Trump thing, we get all this other deep state getting completely out of hand nonsense. And now I'm like, wait a minute, this could like blow up in the next year. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm still asking the question. Can we, I understand? Can we do anything? Or can anybody do anything? It's not just me. Can anyone do? Everybody anything? has to do something. Everybody's got to do something. They got to change in some what we have, what we have, because everyone's doing what they're doing. It's not working. Yeah, but if, if the solution is expecting everyone to change their behavior, that's, that's 
that my my framing is incorrect because you only need the limit setters to actually change and you can just tell the thinking people to set the limits that are necessary to set because they're very clean clear limits i mean we teach it people don't know social science we're the only people who teach social science yep. on planet earth as far as i can tell because i look for other people there aren't any that's All right. the problem Okay. It's like people, we, I tell people, you know, it, it's, it, I feel really great about being a guy who invented this shit, but the problem is we didn't already have people who invented this shit, right? I mean, it's not a, it's not a compliment to me. It's an insult to, to everybody our, else, to everybody else. Y'all a bunch of animals who don't know science. Yes. <laughs> Because it's the science of cooperation, meaning it's the kindergarten science. Yeah. All right. Well, I think I got my answer, which is the only thing we can do is try to get, well, I mean, Brandon, you're doing it really, is try to get more people. We're doing the only thing that we can do until there's more stuff. Yeah, for us exactly. to do. And I make sure that I make sure that we are doing that. Yeah, I get it. I got it. Okay. So, because I mean, the, the whole Mar-a-Lago thing, I mean, I can't fucking believe they did that. <laughs> I mean, I, I just can't believe that they lost sight of preservation of legitimacy despite preference. I just can't believe they would do that. Uh, you, 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 th this is a matter if when it gets to that level that's a matter for congress that's not a right that's a political question that's not a legal question when you're playing this kind of game that's a matter for congress well congress has already looked at everything this guy has done twice right and if you're de getting down here where you have to manipulate institutions there's some there's a law there's a legal premise in here somewhere, um, which is that that um, that the minute there's a question of your neutrality, that ha it becomes a political question, not a legal question. If you can be weaponized, you have to say, we won't be weaponized. Well, of course, they said we won't be weaponized when it was the Clintons. And they say we will be weaponized when it was Obama, when it was a uh, Trump. Now Obama's Obama's uh, game of trading his book for millions of dollars in exchange for getting a publisher the contract with the federal government that's a clear case of corruption. That's quid pro quo, right? You know Trump saying I need help with this Biden thing. Well, he did it fucking open door, right? That's Trump's thing is like open door. I mean, so I'm like, well, I mean, okay, but was there a quid pro quo there? There might have been. I'm not sure, right? But the, the problem is this is a political question. It's not a Justice Department question. And I'm kind of, this is what's bothering me is you, if, if an institution can be weaponized and it is willing to be weaponized, that's the fucking problem because it's not open and it's purely political. It Let's looks to me like all our institutions have been, what? it looks to me like all of our institutions have been weaponized, which is why going into the next election cycle, gutting the entire system is the maneuver. I, get, and I think it's it I think back it's to the stage. I think it's a pitch. Oh yeah. It's, it's just what can happen. You want to thread the needle and win? There's one way. Well, I didn't find this at all surprising because it's been a while since since I've seen any credible pretense of legitimacy. Yes. I see it as the only thing that illegitimate leaders can do is delegitimize the ones before them. Mm -hmm. All right. It was a demonstration of criminality and guilt. Yep. And they use legal pretense and positive law to call it legal.
Well, they use plausible deniability as the category. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They use plausible deniability. So what we it's like Our all this all the stuff we're trying to fix is all the stuff we try to fix is a via negativa, right? We know all the things they do. And and the thing is, we've had a high trust society, but we've also had a society that grew up under the dual, right? Uh, uh, physical violence, uh, war, and the common law courts. And, you know, you there's people, you could get away with killing your, your wife's lover just 100 years ago. That frame, I can't believe it. It's unbelievable. That comes out of most adults now, like when you talk about reality. It's they can't believe it because you would have been killed for it in the past. Yes. That's why. That's why. <clears throat> all right. So so we've licensed all this behavior and we haven't uh, we haven't prohibited, right? Prohibited again. And you know, I think we've covered this oh, the reason for this, at least I have with my conversation with Dr. Brad enough to explain why it happened. But you know, this whole this whole use of freedom of speech to conduct uh, to violate the basically the pe the king's peace to violate the common law is just fucking nonsense and they hide under plausible deniability but what are their terms of pl plausible deniability that they're acting in good faith right th 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 that's they're not acting in good right you could the only way to test if you're acting in good faith is to look at the evidence well if the evidence says you're not acting you're acting biased not in good faith then you're not acting in good faith. It's not a question anymore. So they, they, they live on this. Be, they want to be treated like they want to be treated like children, right? Because they, the inclusion thing is like let's invite children to the table. Yes. And then the oh well they made them they're just kids you can't blame them. Yeah. yeah All yeah. right. <clears throat> well, it's like you can't invite them to the table. That's what we're saying. Well, there's not kids at the table. The other side of that is they can excuse anything if it's on behalf of the children. That's right. They can use them as a shield, which is just that is also yeah. evil. They use them as wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's an insight. Hold on. That's an, I gotta get that. That's an insight to add. I was gonna say there's a, here's another insight, but I want to add that. Fuck. Where's I got I have like a hundred windows open. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. They hid behind what the mask thing too. Like, oh my kid doesn't mind wearing a mask. Um hide behind, hiding behind, behind. Uh, uh, these are all these are all the same thing. Um, what was the one about uh, hiding behind kids? It was the one just before that. Weaponizing them. Uh, uh, pretense. What was the pretense? Plausible Shit. deniability. Yeah, plausible children have plausible deniability because they're innocent. That's why they have. That's what they have it all the time because they're an innocent creature. Uh, missing it's what when they say that they're acting um equally like what did i call that <clears throat> i'll find it in the i'll find it in the video yeah i want to say intellectually honestly but that's not what a there's a term in primate behavior that that covers all this it's agonistic buffering where smaller weaker males would use children as a buffer between larger more aggressive males yes in primate communities and we're doing that with our with children and humans all over the place so i mean politics has been that for a few generations now i'd like to use that to make a point most of these people are not acting in an evil fashion. They're acting on incentives that have precedent in the animal kingdom. Like yeah. there are plenty of mammals that throw their children to, to become safe. Like well, you're putting people into a set of instinctual reactions to this place that are going to appear like animals, but they don't have another choice because you're not, you're not affording them choices. You're constraining all their choices and then putting pressure on them. Closer and closer to nature's feedback. <laughs> closer. Um, sorry, I just needed to capture that because that was a really good one. Um, I focused 
um, really heavily on baiting into hazard and plausible deniability is cover for baiting into hazard. But uh, what you were just explaining, which is uh, uh, aggression, which is undermining under, co under color, color of law, right? Mm -hmm. I got a, that's the term I'm looking for. Sorry. Um, undermining under color of law. This is a plausible deniability. Can't be plausible, deniable. Plausibly deniable, you're not a child. Yeah. You are held accountable <laughs> to your actions. Exactly. You <clears throat> diligence. In tort, it doesn't matter if you, you, your intent doesn't matter. Correct. Um, uh, I lost you. Where did you guys go? So this, this so uh, see if I can tie this together. So what you just explained was the via, po the, uh, the via positiva use, right? Aggression. Not baiting into hazard, but aggression. The, um, what Scott Adams did this week was he documented the, um, the means of social construction. Uh, he, he put some steps out to if I could find it really quickly and, and walk through it so I can, maybe something will fall out of that. Um, uh, you know, there's the war one. There's um, Martin's brilliant escalation of the generations of Judaism, which I thought was wonderful. Um, okay, so Scott Adams said uh, they make a false accusation, right? Like with basically, the, it's called, he calls it the hoax pattern. They make a false accusation. Um, they use the institutions, usually the institutions of law or prosecution, to give it false legitimacy. Then they amplify it with a bunch of what ifs. Then they state that it's true, even though it's left. They keep this alive by repetition. They claim they so they've industrialized the mass production of a lie mm -hmm. by they, social construction and social proof. Right. They claim plausible deniability when falsified, but they don't. They they waffle on it. They just say, "Well, we were." It, it, they usually it's usually done by moving the goalpost, right? They change the accusation from one thing to another. I don't even think they do deny it anymore. Like we we're talking about like we were talking about with the kids. They don't even deny it anymore. They say it might be false, but we have to act on it anyways because it's what's best for the children. Yeah, that's, that's an escalation. Even, that's an escalation. Right. That's not even deniability anymore. <clears throat> Um, they move, so that's they move the goalpost, and then the um, this process keeps repeating with a new goalpost, with a new false accusation, new false validation, a new inflation, a new uh, uh, false confirmation by lying about it. Because it's now, right? They keep it has happened now. Petition. And so this is their art of redefinition. Redefinition is the same thing as, as goal post. Measurement. Measurement. I'm just kind of changing. Um, uh, so they move the goalpost again. And this process keeps going on with, and what they net, we, and the problem is the suggestion sticks in the public who wants to agree with the underlying uh, moral intuition of the accusations, despite the fact that every one of them is false. Right? I mean, that's what. So I really liked that he'd uh, built this chain sequence of the via positiva of of uh, a, this of a social construction of a hope of a of an undermining. And I think that uh, one of the things I haven't done is I, I focus so much on baiting into hazard. Because I'm so interested in outlawing the um, uh, in the the various financial and uh, in other words, the crimes that are executed by the conspiracy with the government and the holes in the law that I didn't talk about that I didn't deal enough with this question, and so I thought he did a pretty good job, and that I could expand on that 
as a set of general rules as the via positiva, just as I've done with the via negativa. Technically, it's part of critique, right? It's undermining, right? It's undermining combined with sophistry. So you have critique, um, critique undermines, uh, undermining is a failure to provide a competing solution that's equally criticizable because if it was equally open to crit uh, op equally stated the op equally criticizable it would be inferior to the status quo and then they do it okay so i'm sorry i'm going through it so i i think i need to work on that i think i need to add that positive branch to the negative branch right. sorry did i take lucas smiling at me because i'm Going off, and what are you? What are you laughing at me for, Luke? Hey, huh? Can't have one without the other. Can't do. Okay. Can't have negative without positive. So it's. So. And the purpose of all those exercises that happened through the Trump was to smear Trump's reputation. It's just reputation destruction. So all the the cycle within and so on, like. Yeah, but why, so why do we all get? Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been thrilled about Trump running until the Mar-a-Lago event. Now I'm just fucking furious. <clears throat> and I, I, think I don't have like that's <laughs> not that's not listening to my mind. That's sure. listening to my gut. Yeah. And so I gotta, I gotta feel like a lot of people are pretty pissed off about because this is just over the top. They don't have options that are not over the top anymore. They don't. Okay. They can't make it. They can't make a choice that's not going to look absolutely. It's, it's going to get. Gonna it's going to get worse. What are they going to do? This isn't the top. Yeah. This, well, is the top. This, this wasn't over the top because we're not at the top. We're not at the top. Yeah. Okay. Okay. People well, keep wanting to hope that the that the system's going to play fair, and they're seeing it not play fair. Well, we care about playing fair. They don't care about playing fair. They care about fair outcomes. Well, I care about no, no, they don't. <laughs> Excuse me. That, that, that's uh, that's another Matan Bailey. Please, please, please tell me. Please, uh, so that I don't have to. Please explain. Well, they just want to get rid of us, of, of whites, Europeans. Yes. In yes. middle class Christians. Right. And because we're doing better, fair outcomes is useful. Excuse. Well, do you think all these white Karens think that they want to get rid of white people? They say they do. What? Go ahead, Martin. Uh, I'm not sure they have any idea what they're doing, uh, but they're just predicting next tokens in the speech. In other words, they're just language models. Yes. Brandon, were you going to say something? Oh, yeah, they would fill out that language model with yes, they they are also working towards the extinction of what it's popular to say. It's in their rhetoric. You're it's right. Taught but at, it's taught at schools. Do they, do, do they want that though? Or is that, I know that's what the, the rhetoric is saying. I know that's what they're, right. they're saying out loud. I do. They can't. Do they want that or do they want the white? people the white you know, producers collared and under control and continue to produce on behalf of everybody but they they don't want us to have any actual power over anything i don't they want, think, us on the, they want us on the mouse wheel i don't think that people who are seeking control know what they want that's why they're seeking control i don't think they want anything other than to think they can have control over outcomes so the I answer is the, the typical answer is of course they don't think Right. right. Not the, not. There's a feeling, and they use whatever words assist them in expressing that feeling. Thinking doesn't come right, in. Right, but at the, same, at the same time, we're constantly talking about groups of people in charge and putting their fingers on these levers. So what do they want then? Somebody wants something in this. If, if there's anyone actually consciously doing any of this, somebody wants something. Or it yeah. is all just people acting on incentives. So we've got to stop talking about people consciously trying to manipulate this stuff because that's not the case then the people who are manipulating things are actively seeking profits and power 
I mean, do, do those people genuinely think that a bunch of third worlders are going to come in and be good doctors? They're going to have, they're going to need doctors. Well, it's not working now. Right. They know that that's not the case. Right. So then then they can't want all of the good doctors to disappear. They pay them privately. They don't care if they disappear for us. But that extends to everything. They don't want the good garbage people to disappear. They don't want the good wait staff to disappear. I'm I'm unsure they touch, meaning destroying the lower class for them doesn't mean that they're going to destroy their ability to buy all those things that we reduce the cost of through comments. They're attempting to privatize what glorious global life global life looks like and they're going to do it by making super cities and favelas yeah, the point i'm getting is you can't I, make I don't think merit disappear that. and still benefit from merit say that again look you can't make merit disappear and, and still benefit from merit correct they are destroying the foundation that will afford them what is they're looking to, yeah, but they, to they don't they they, <clears throat> they don't think no they, they, all they do is how I want other people to treat me like a parent treats me. Like, right. But who are we talking about with they? The people that are in charge? Oh, the enemy's elites or the enemy's yeah. zombies? The zombies. Right. Why do we care about them? What are the enemies? Well, I, I, um, They're the ones that are supposedly getting rid of the white men. Not the right. I know, but that, that's the why army, we, right? Why do we believe that if getting rid of the white men puts them at a disadvantage? Yeah, they have no idea. But once we replace those elites, they'll be our zombies again. We're solving three or four problems here. Someone, Sorry? <clears throat> we're solving three or four problems here. Someone recreate the track of issues, right? Because we're solving different things, all, all four of us. Yeah. Um. I was well. I don't. I if I there's start... an there's an anti-white sentiment. It's, right. it's apparent. It's out in the open. You can say it out loud. Luke right. was saying something about that sentiment. Yeah. Is, is, is that sentiment driving action or is that sentiment emerging from action? It, it's a cover for the action. It's, it's emerging a, for an attempt for people who are not high in status to obtain status, to obtain self-image and status by going along with elites who are establishing the trend. And in doing so, they feel that they've ra- they, they've moved up the status hierarchy, but it's just false, right? And I think so it just include. I think it might just be inclusion. Meaning yeah, they yet to be included. Uh, meaning there's no high. They're not looking to climb a hierarchy. They want to be satiated just as a herd. Okay, so they're you. So, uh, 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 not not predated upon, right? They want to feel, I mean, if you talk to these people, the stupid people, they want to feel righteous. That's it. They want to feel righteous. Um, and a lot of them want to feel righteous. But And of course, this is my, I see what's happened. Uh, I'm just talking about the negativa. They want to feel righteous because they don't feel righteous in life. Yes. Right. right? Um, they don't they seek power because they're powerless. They right? They're looking for control. Power. They have none. They, seek they can't control. even control their own emotions. They seek understanding. They seek a frame because they have none. Um, so it's like it's that oral argument that I mean, if you actually ask, interview it, because I've interviewed a bunch of teachers, right? Because I have unfortunate proximity to them, is that these are dumb fucks by, by and large. I mean, it's amazing how dumb these fucks are. And secondly, it's imagine how much they coddle to students, right? And they coddle the students because they're afraid of teachers, unions, politicians, you know, all these political layers above them. We're teaching by relationality instead of hierarchy. Yeah. And it's, kill- it's killing us because you're putting teachers in the classroom that are roughly like the same IQ as the kids so that they can get along with one another instead of there being a very clearly delineated hierarchy where someone is clearly smarter than you and gifting you information you should well, it, it's one thing to teach a kid um uh methods right how to read how to write how to do cam- you know, anything, any methodology. Basically, these are systems of measurement and right. Um, it's another thing to keep, teach kids judgments, right? And so uh, the problem is, is if we don't have like natural law, 
as a foundation, there's no way to test variation from a mean. Correct. And so what I would think is that you, you, you've got to pass your, you've got to pass your course in natural law in order to be able to, to teach. Because first of all, if you can't do that, you, you can't teach. Um, second of all, there's no place in which measurements or even taking measurements is not, is not uh, in the context of judgments. Like you see that in tests, right? They're writing these ideology into the t questions they're asking in tests. Yes. Right? So whereas we have to change the ideology back to natural law instead of uh, undermining of natural law. Yeah. Teacher shouldn't be a profession. It should be where retired uh, yeah. successful professionals go to access their their, uh, their to give uh, back pensions. to the community, right? That, I mean, that's where that, yeah, to access you know, their what? Say that that was brilliant. To, to access their pensions. I mean, that's that's yes. All everyone teaching should be a, a retired successful professional, and just that, we, that we'll keep paying you as long as you keep teaching. <laughs> and they'll also, yeah, boy. There's a certain, like, my sister teaches um, preschool and kindergarten. I don't know if she teaches first grade or not, right? But she's, her, her skill is preschool mm -hmm. developmental. Um, and so uh, the, amount, the amount of shit that I've learned from her passing her Coursewares. Another, she teaches courses, but she also has to take courses to get her PhD, right? right? right. So the amount of shit that I, I mean, it's mostly propaganda. And the second thing it made me very clear to me is teaching is you can teach teach teaching in six weeks, right? You you can't. That's that's all there is to the method. The rest of it's pattern recognition while you're doing it it's a craft right, right. and so you and the, the third thing is you either are the kind of person who finds interest in empathizing with a frame of mind and helping it step make a step faster or you're not right so that that's a talent not a skill right so there's there's a skill which is trivial excuse me there's a skill which is trivial a uh, talent that's necessary, but it's efficient. And then there's experience, which is the only thing that, produ that produces the craft in you. I mean, it's like trying to be, a, I'm trying to think of, can you be a, mach can you be a uh, tool and die maker if you're dyslexic? I I'm betting that's a problem, right? I mean, I I'm certain you can't be a mold maker and be dyslexic. That would be like the opposite end of the spectrum. Well, it's the same thing as like, I couldn't do like little kids because I can't fucking understand them. But like, you know, my sister, she listens to a little kid that she just watches them and she knows what's going on, right? Somebody just sent me a, an email, but I just heard that this from this woman that used to take her on meetings because she would give you reads on people. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so that's a skill. So teachers like, so if we went to say, okay, Let's take those basic things. You can learn that. Anybody can learn that, except give that six weeks and six months of training to somebody who's had life experience, right? Who actually has managed people in the real world. And let's make sure that what's ever taught is in the context of wisdom. And let's make sure that we have the natural law as the rule, as the as a rule, not rule, rate of as a as the standard of weights and measures. So we can always measure what they're teaching them against uh, a standard of weight measure. That way we know how far they're off. You know, it's not, not everything needs to be ideal, right? I mean, so I'm, that's a way of amplifying your point, Luke. I'm sorry if I went too long on that. It suits everybody better. Um, makes the age difference. I mean, and then what is this shit no. about 20 year old student, 20 year old teachers teaching high school students? That That's right. Exactly. What the fuck? And there's nothing wrong with, you know, the, these old, these old actual teachers that can provide wisdom, having teachers aides helping them manage the class and stuff like that. Sure. The instruction should be being led by. <laughs> right. That can provide perspective on what's being taught. 
Well, you know, but the, the thing is, though, that the econ we spend all this money on this infrastructure and all these retirement plans for teachers, but what we really need is is more teachers per person, right? And and possibly what we need is, as Luke just said, because they do this in low in the lower level grades, is you need a teacher and you need a couple of assistants, right? So, but if you just do it as well, a woman can only handle seven or eight children, then that's the size of a classroom. Because you talk to teachers like, I'd like 10, but I can do 12. The minute you get to 15, you're pushing it. When you get a 20, oh, 20, forget it. You can't keep track of that many brains. So look, yes. why don't you go take over the education department? <laughs> Well, I would just shut it down. So, oh, exactly. <laughs> They're going to take the government out of schooling. Well, you see, Arizona did that this year, right? They just passed it. They did a great job. That went through. Yeah. Yeah. The so, money's going to follow the kids. So, if you, you just have money follow the kid, that will solve the fucking problem. It, there's got to be another step in there, though. They're going to try to regulate each step of the way. So, I would never take government money, even doing what I'm doing, because I won't allow them in to, to dictate what I do with it. So, I don't, I think if there's a standardized test and you're just, that's all that's necessary. That's all that's necessary, but they, that's not what they'll limit them. So no, no, I, 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 I know that, but I'm saying we, we can, it's not an, uns, in other words, they're evil. It doesn't, it doesn't mean there isn't a solution to it. Right. I mean, right. my, uh, my complaint with standardized testing is everybody doesn't get there at the same age. Right. Right. I mean, it'd be this, some of us will get there a year later, but that it that doesn't make any fucking difference because we we were fi fi developing this part of our mind and brain instead of this part of our brain, and it just doesn't fucking matter. I mean, three years, four years behind that matters, but a year either way doesn't matter. Maybe two years either way. Boys are slower than girls, right? Boys shouldn't. I mean, boys shouldn't go to school till they're six or seven. I was three when I spoke my first words. Were you? Yes. Yeah. Were they as were they as parsimonious and dry at three as they are today? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would love to talk to your mother sometime. That would be extremely humorous. You've been around your mom a couple times and you won't let us interact with her. Well, that'd be a language barrier, obviously. Well, you could translate. Yeah. But you don't trust me, do you? Well, I don't have to translate accurately, do I? <laughs> yeah, I would be unsure that I was getting the real words from his mom. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a fun conversation. So Martin says that he uh, didn't speak until he was three. So to describe Martin when he was very young, was he like other children or was he? And and I'm sure we could get great stories out of her. See, my mom's passed now. You can't get anything out of her. <laughs> <laughs> well, you put it everything out there. Yeah. <laughs> You're not afraid. <laughs> oh, I've met. Brandon's mom, she'd have no problem telling stories, but of course she'd just tell us our bo her boys were perfect. She would tell you that. <laughs> well, Luke, what would your mom say? Um, I, I think in general, my 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 mom likes me, so she'd probably tell you very very nice things about me. Yes, yes. We had to learn to guard from the heaping of undue praise very early. There's no measuring objectivity no. as a youngin. Everything he did was great. I was my mom's favorite, so. Good, uh, Anyway, so, um, all right, so uh, we went off on a couple of tangents there. I was trying to find out because I brought up this concept. Martin said, well, they're just trying to get rid of us, right? And I'm like, well, yeah, okay, they are, right? But I want to know why the order- don't want to, They don't want to be held accountable for their externality, and they don't realize that we're insulating them from nature, as Luke likes to say. That's not an externality. That's the intent. They have, Martin's making the case that they're just purposely destructive. Yes. Which some yeah, but, of them... but, but if I go to 
if I go to the, I mean, I, I could go walk out my door, right? They're just ordinary folk. Ordinary. Probably uh, around here, almost okay, always. I, I didn't mean the NPCs now. Yeah, I know. I know that there's a, the class that's absolutely trying to undermine. My my question is, why do so many people go along with it? Why do why do these why do these women, especially because it's mostly women, go along with it? Like I understand the guys, they're just effective, but women, because, I don't get it. Because they're generating speech acts that produce social desirability and chance of attaining higher status. Basically. Yep. Wow. So, so where am I going to go with this? There's like, I'm like, okay, where can I go without landmines? <laughs> Just tell them we offer better programming, antivirus software. Yeah. Well, that's good. If, if, you, if you don't want landmines, you can have me on. <laughs> and, and I guess to, to, to change the frame a little bit on, on what I was trying to point out is, you know, if, if let's say you have a group of people out there that looks at the entire rest of the population as something less than them, as, as, a, as an animal rather than equal to them, you don't you know, we'll call them, they look at the rest of the world as dogs. You don't shoot your best guard dogs, right? You just make sure they continue to be undermined, so they continue to be guard dogs and nothing more. They never, they, they never try to get themselves above you, right? I mean, it's you 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 can convince all the other dogs to, to constantly nip at the guard dogs, and you try to take them down that. all the time. They, they they don't they don't think. The hard part is we think they think they don't. When I'm talking about the elites, I'm talking about the people that the we're elites. saying are intentionally yeah. trying to manipulate all this stuff. Of course they are because they're they have uh the over they have overconfidence. But you're saying they don't think. Uh I would say that it's an adulting problem. We think because we think in outcomes. They think in term the elites think in terms of wants, states and the their their followers th think in terms of uh, what Martin called speech acts, feelings. And so the problem is that the people who are credentials, the credentialists, and our enemy, who is a credentialist civilization, those people have no experience doing anything with real people except the followers, the non-thinkers. And so what they want is the thinkers out of the way so they can do the leadership and they can get the followers. In other words, they want to be mothers and we want to be fathers. Right. And they're trying to get the mothers are trying to get rid of the fathers. Well, that, that is why we're their enemy of the, of the elites driving this. Because we think. And that's because a problem for them. And we think because we see the we are taking responsibility for the intersection between people and the real world. And they're trying to deny the real world to take responsibility for the people not adapting to it. Can I make a, can uh, I make a kinder frame? Go ahead, Martin. Sorry. I mean, starting from cognition, that we're seeing the patterns, and that is the problem for them. That we're modeling the world. Say that again. I didn't get it. That we're modeling the world and pretty accurately. And that's a problem. It's a problem that we're modeling it correctly? Yes. Um, what do you mean correctly? Do they, do they think we're modeling the world correctly? Because of information that model has about them. I'm not. I know I, I could. that you're trying to make a point and I can't. I can't uh, translate it because what I keep hearing is. Uh, I just really see the patterns of what they're doing. It, it's it sounds like he's saying that we see the necessity to hold them accountable, but I mean to squeeze all the frames together. That is what I'm saying. The elites that steer people, that program them, 
for their own goods. They see people as dogs or NPCs to be programmed because they don't see another way. We're the only people they who want teach to social serve, science. They want to serve the non, non-adaptive by eliminating the adaptive. And we want to serve the non-adaptive by adapting and letting them have the fruits of it. To get people to adapt, you hold them accountable. That's hitting a limit. That's feedback so that they change. And they don't want to, they don't want to adapt. So no, I'm trying to figure out what is the what why do these credentialist elites? Why do I'm thinking of Sam, what's his name? Sam Harris. Harris. I'm thinking of him right now because uh, the his he switches from true to I just think so. I just feel so uh, with e- treating them as equals, right? That's what he's doing. And so uh, uh, I'm looking at how how why do those people think they're right? Reality rewards them for their actions. It's survival. I, I, what they're doing I is think survival. that I think there's no feedback loop, so reward re- reality doesn't punish them for their. That's reality. fair enough. Fair enough. So I think the problem with credentialists in general, unlike the military or the economy, is or sports sports they're insulated from the negative feedback they're insul- insulated from the negative feedback loop yeah, there is positive feedback and there's all and all yeah, the is pause and so they get positive personal and social feedback for saying something desirable but they're insulated in time from the feedback loop that is produced by their actions i mean and they don't believe it either i mean it's always like well, Marxism hasn't been tried yet, you know. Right. It's hard to get them to believe it, too. If you're not matching the infraction with an equilibration, the longer there is, the harder it is for the being to connect the two things together. That's the, the well, lag of the law is a problem for us. You, I mean, it's like and they're not liable for their fallacy, right? They're not, they don't warrant, they're not, they don't warranty and they're not held liable for it. So it's like, the economist group. I mean, I, I think I was writing about this last night. Um, the 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 average man on the street is more likely to be correct in almost every single subject than an expert. I'm just finishing off Black Swan uh, and Tyler is making very similar arguments. Yes. Yeah, you know the. In so many ways, our strengths are also our weaknesses. You know, we, we chatted a bit about how um, law creates that that buffer between nature's feedback and, and yeah. our actions, right? Yes. But that's also what permits our enemies to even exist among us. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, say that again. That was really smart. Oh, that 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 buffer that we create. You know, start out. Start. Give the whole story. Sure, sure. So, nature's feedback is often immediate and often lethal. Right. And so yes. we cooperate to create a, a buffer to, be, to create, you know, expand the time between our actions and nature's feedback. Yes. And out of that cooperation emerges things like law and rules and limits that we apply to each other rather than being confronted with nature's feedback. Right. That that's a strength for, for people that can can cooperate. <laughs> right. I mean, it allows us to increase that 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 period of time between our actions and nature's feedback so that we can survive more things and and you know build better things and things like that right but it also but, is what permits, but, <laughs> but that 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 same buffer is also what permits our enemies to live amongst us they're not getting that immediate feedback from nature if we're not providing a proxy for their actions we're not providing a market for the suppression of their yes exactly yeah, but that means that law is applied selectively, or that it's incomplete. Right. It's incomplete. Yeah, but you know, because I mean, you, you know, the 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 R selected organism can't live in a K selected environment without some form of subsidy in that environment. Is that true? No, I think R. The trick is R and R and K trade. It's the calculation. K isn't always right either. 
right? Um, so it's the it's the it's the it's the discovery of persistence by trade between them, right? I mean that's what that's what produces cooperation, right? And so the problem is, how do we drive them into cooperation? I'm trying to I'm, I'm floating this by you, Luke, because yeah, and I don't I don't agree with that premise. I think yeah, well, I'm trying to. Well, that's our, why our, I'm floating it by you. I think K can survive in our environments, but R cannot survive in K environments. Okay, you're not going to so, get you're not going to get to a bunch of Equatorials living in in northern winters without the help of people that have already experienced living in northern winters. Okay, that that's the that's the same. Okay, I misunderstood you then. Got it. Uh, but, that, but the that, but the that, northerners can live on the equator without any problem. So I think it's some matter of intelligence, and that intelligent Rs can fit into the necessary limits if they need to. Well, he's uh, the thing is, I agree with you, Martin, but uh, that I misunderstood Luke for the same reason. Was he saying an R environment or a K? And uh, and th that's a that's a talks about a population, so it makes sense to me. Um, and there, there's plenty of flight R selected individuals who get by fine. Well, the, you know, it, it's because okay. they're supported by K individuals. Yeah, it, it's okay if <laughs> you have a female population supported by a male population, as long right. as. The female population's trade is reproduction. I mean that and care for the reproduced. That's fine. That's a parasitic relationship, but it it's a productive relationship. It's not fine when you develop a set of elites in both places who aren't providing any returns on the hyperconsumption that they're doing, and furthermore, when they begin to undermine the case. Right. I mean, there's a difference between trade with the Ks and undermining the Ks. There's a, and there's a difference between undermining and baiting them into a hazard. There's undermining, baiting them into hazard and treason. So have we figured out, have we gotten any more progress on why there's so many NPCs other than they're signaling dissatisfaction. And uh, haven't there always been so many? They were just getting better propaganda, better in the sense of more moral. Uh, in the past, it's not, no, there's, they, Fate, God, nature, there's all sorts of reasons why people said it, this is just the way it is. But uh, there aren't very many cases in history where well, there's, there's cases, but it's, yeah, there is, where it's, yeah, it's there, there they did that. Yeah, okay, you're right. Yes, you're right. It, it, if I go through it, yeah, there's almost always a, it's someone else's fault contingent. I'm not sure there's ever been a place where everybody, anybody was this well off that they complained about it. Right. Yeah. Well, this is, I'd like to highlight that this is a different time. And like, we're talking about a, a billion people possibly starving over the next few years. That's a, that's something a lot of people. Yeah. That's, that's not gonna. I guess it's like, so like I said, uh, like I think you started out, Brandon, but demographics will solve this problem regardless of what we, you know, there's natural, we're all trying to fix the problem because we want to save people hurt, right? We'd like to stop the hurt now. We'd like to stop people the hurt future. But the answer is, it's like Brandon was just keeps bringing up, is that nature's going to make them hurt. The hurt's coming. <laughs> the hurt's coming. <laughs> And uh, so, the, and it'll and the hurt will do the will produce the change. Um, if uh, we don't succeed in in uh, in providing 
the ideas and the uh, the solutions before it gets here. But America has to stand up as the adult, put their foot down. Yeah, I mean that's not going to happen with Joe Biden and. <laughs> well, he's not an adult. <laughs> what a pair of ass clowns. You know, Obama, Obama, Obama was a shitty president, but a great face, right? For a lot of people. Um, Carter was a, a <laughs> bad when, president. When, when you want a parent to be in charge, then having someone that sounds like a parent is great. <laughs> and Obama sounded like a parent. That's right. But I mean, this 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 guy, he's 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 incompetent. And we've had was it Taft? Who was really incompetent? It's like I think it was Taft. Um, I'm not a pres I'm not a good presidential historian. I mean, I'm in a minute, but we've had a couple of remarkably incompetent presidents, but this one, this one is absolutely over the top incompetent. It's unbelievable. Um, it, that's not to say his administration is incompetent, but but the president, and vice president, he's she's a fucking lunatic. I mean, she's the craziest fucking person. That's got even close. I mean, Lincoln's wife was no match for this woman. So Lincoln's wife, who was the manic depressive? I think it might have been Lincoln. I might be wrong there. I know Lincoln had a problem with depression, but I think it's I think his wife was a manic depressive. I'm not positive. One of them was. Anyway. Wow, these I mean, this guy is. I mean, Carter, Carter was just. He's not stupid. He's just wrong about everything every fucking time. Because he's just like this Christian optimism bleeding out of every orifice. Right? And then, you know, I'm going through them and, you know, I wasn't, I can't remember, I can only remember back to Kennedy. Right? Uh, but, you know, Johnson was wrong. Carter was foolishly wrong. Uh, nobody's been this bad. Nixon was actually good. He was just wrong about a few things. Of course, he did the same. Uh, uh, I mean, that's why I got rid of him. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, this guy, I mean, this guy's an, a great example of the system working. Is it is that we have we keep electing these politicians thinking that they actually do something when actually they're just it's actually the state the deep state that does everything and that's the primary reason they don't want to have term limits because it would just make the staffs the ones in charge and the politicians figureheads from what i understand the staffs are already in charge yeah and so but you can see that in the biden because he's not confident to do this correct he's not he's not even there like i don't watch the regular politics stuff like the television or his speeches yeah. or anything like that but i've seen enough of his incoherent mumblings to realize he's not even up there plus he's too old to be a president anyway yeah i mean i also think pedophiles shouldn't be presidents but that's just me i think that too <clears throat> i you know i actually defended him early on because i'm like you know Let's pick on the guy for what's really his fault, right? Because he's not, he's just, he's just a sock puppet, right? I mean, that his whole career is being a pretty sock puppet. And, and, and okay, well, great. And then they pick up the sniffing thing and I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of creepy. But I mean, the, guy, the reason we shouldn't elect this guy is because he's not competent. Right, or, but now he gets an office, and fuck, he's really creepy. He's really incompetent, and it's just amazing that what a staff can do. I mean, it's just it's like the DNC is running the White House. I look at Trump, and I'm like, God, you know, you need a cheapest staff that can translate for you. Explain what he means, and you just and he needed a he needed a, a 
press secretary that would rationalize what he said because everything he said was rational but he was trying to make the base he was trying to turn the left against them their own technique against them and keep his base motivated and it worked perfectly and his freaking policies were straight up perfect all the way across i mean i can't think of any policy he tried to get in place that wasn't right so it's even 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 the even you guys will jump on the the vax thing but i mean what is he going to do he's like i'm not i don't know the answer i got I, at some point uh, i got to go with the experts here if he comes out leading with apologies and says he's going to run on dismantling the deep state and the federal government he will win hands down that's what i think hands down hey i'm sorry that i made these wrong decisions and this is what we're going to do moving forward. And we're at war. And this is how we're going to handle it. And that is, and that is it. I can't, I'm, you know, I don't, all I know is if my gut switched to being pro-Trump because of Mar-a-Lago and it's going to stick, then I'm not the only one whose gut went. Because, I mean, if I look at what's right, my reason or my gut in elections, it's my gut. Right. I, I, it doesn't matter what I vote for or what I think is right. My gut tells me, and it turns out like I knew Trump was going to lose this election. I, I'm in favor of him just because of his mere presence, what it does to the press. I would, I would keep him in office until the press can, has completely rebuilt itself. Yes. So for that alone. I don't know. I don't even care what he does while he's in office, just him being there causes them to explode themselves so effectively that it's worth it. I'm sure every other option will be worse in any case. And Republicans are trying really hard to get him replaced with DeSantis. I think DeSantis so, is too smart. Yeah, but DeSantis is containment. It could be. I think he's too smart to run, especially if Trump runs. I wouldn't run against Trump. It's not worth it. He'll do too much damage to you. I mean, I... I don't know that to be the case, but just if I was looking at the thing, if I was advising, well, he he has to he has to plan to run. He can't not plan, right? But that just means that in four years he's the next guy up. Correct. That's right. he just builds up. And we can I mean, already see that Trump approved candidates are winning all over the place. I can't hear you. We can see already that Trump approved candidates are winning all over the place. All place yes. Not it's not close either. They're not close elections. I don't know. I can't. Uh, all I know is, wow. If I, my gut tells me that, that means a lot of people's. You can get forgiven a lot of sins if you are in unjustly, not treated unjustly. Mm-hmm. And he's just got a beautiful case. I don't know. Scott Adams did a beautiful piece on how many. He says there are fourteen hoaxes now. Um, he's got. He keeps a list. Yes, he does. Yeah, of Trump hoaxes. <clears throat> and I'm like, that's horrible. That's horrible. I don't think it's complete. It's probably not complete. <laughs> All right, guys, anything else? I love our conversations. Well, they're helpful to bounce reality off of people. There's, people don't live here with us. This is what we've been discussing the whole time, right? In reality, they live somewhere else with the other people. We're trying to land them all here so they don't crash into us. They have no way... How does the average person negotiate life? They go from intuition, lived experience, whatever knowledge they've accumulated. And, and the problem with, with is you needed some sort of regularity. You need to have know what the baseline, a baseline is, which is what your normal is, and what regularity is, which is what develops, what varies from the baseline. But I mean, if you live in a world that seems this full, full of bullshit and chaos, 
it gets very disconcerting because we're desocialized, friendless, familyless, uh, fragile occupations, uh, fragile. I mean, everything's so fucking fragile. And we wonder why people are going nuts all the time. It's because <laughs> used to we used to need to learn how to navigate unsafe environments, right? Just yes. as part of our existence. Yep. Now we feel so safe, we don't even teach that anymore. That's why I like our discourse because we're adversarial. It is unsafe here. It's not a safe space. We're not here to make you feel good. We don't even make ourselves feel good most of the time. I try to get under Martin's skin all the time. It doesn't work. Then he, he Martin I, says frequently that he came from the other side. Like those people are better at getting under people's skin. Than you <laughs> I mean, I wasn't anywhere close to what I see today. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> all right. Um, that's all I. Uh, that's all I have. I covered the. All I wanted to cover today was what's the state of the the, the population in that. Um, uh, what's his name had written up a positive view of uh, the sequence of tactics they used to create hoaxes. Um, and I thought that was wonderful. Uh, and I think I got there. Okay. Anybody else got anything? Just end the recording, though. All right. Thanks. I'm going to just end the recording. So where is it? Hello? Where's recording? There's a thing here that says record, right? Isn't there a button? It's supposed to be a button that says, there it is. I had to make you wider. I think there's a button. All right. Uh, for the audience, thanks for watching. Talk to you later.